Hello, today we're going to be going over the coach with you. We are going to be starting up front here, pretty much with our tongue jack. Uh, the tongue jack is to level the camper from front to back and also to get on and off your tow vehicle. This guy here is going to be your little light switch so you can turn it on if you had a hookup at night. But basically you got your up to bring it up and down to bring it down. Don't want to do too much because I do have our stabilizer jacks down. Uh, I do like to recommend while you are still hooked to the tow vehicle, make sure you're level from side to side first by using the carpenter's level right inside the doorway. Uh, let the tow vehicle roll on to help you roll the trailer on the blocks if you need to. Once you've unhooked and you level front to back and then you would lower your stabilizer jacks. Uh, I actually have a three quarter socket on my drill, it makes it a lot easier. It does come with the manual uh, one. I'll show you guys that here in just a moment. And this also does come with a manual crank option as well if something happened to the motor. Underneath here is going to be our propane tanks. You have two 20 pound tanks. These guys are both filled minus what was used to test the propane system. Uh, at this time, I do have this one on, this one off. I do like to run the one on and one off so you don't want one of the tanks is empty. Uh, with your regulator, it is designed to where if you have the other tank on, once this one is on, it will start pulling from the other tank. But you won't know that this tank is empty unless you come out here and look at your regulator. And this little window right here, right now, reads green. When it's empty, it will read red. And then back behind here is where our battery is located. This 24 series battery. All right, let's move around. It's going to be those manual cranks for the tongue jack and for our stabilizers. We also have our outside sprayer. Pretty much it connects right over here. I'll step over here and just show you that real quick. Basically, this guy will just, you got two little notches on there. They just slide in and twist the lock into place. You can basically buy any kind of type general sprayer from Lowe's, Walmart, Home Depot, anything like that. We do also have an inverter here. Uh, with this guy, there's a power switch here. There's also a controller inside where you can control the power from inside as well. With this guy, it does only control just this outlet located right here and the outlet on, next to the bed right in the, on this wall. We'll show you that once we step inside. Next, we're gonna have our water heater. Basically, you got your cap that will go on. This is a one and one sixteenth socket. You always want to make sure you take this guy off when you are done camping just to get all the water out of the camper so it won't become stagnant or bad on you. Uh, there's the options for propane or electric. Those are controlled from inside. I'll show you that once we step inside. Whenever you do go to remove this cap to get the water out, open this guy here to relieve the pressure and then take that guy out. Water will always come out of this whenever you're relieving the pressure, every time. All right, next, we're gonna talk about that guy right there. Next down here is gonna be where our city water connection is. With this guy, it is recommended that you have a pressure regulator at the water spigot. From there, your options of an inline water filter and then your blue or white water drinking hose. Then you'll plug into here, turn on the water, and you'll be able to ready to use the cold side right away. You won't be able to use the hot side until the water tank has been filled. This unit has been uh, blown out and uh, antifreeze in the P-traps at this time. So the water heater is in the bypass mode and I will show you guys that when we are inside. Next one over here is gonna be your black tank flush. This is pretty much a sprayer inside a black tank, sprays around and gets the nastiness out. I do like to recommend that you would always have a pressure regulator on the water spigot also, but then go out and get yourself a black hose. Keep the, you know, keep the hose separated, black tank, black hose. It just keeps it simple. Once again, go to Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot, Menards, anything along those lines, get you a black hose. Uh, but then you'll hook that guy up, turn it on. You do want to make sure this valve is open when you go to do that. So you'll have your center hose connected onto here. It's connected to the dump on the ground. And then you'll open that to start dumping. Turn this guy on, let it start spraying. And then uh, you'll watch the clear elbow at the end of the sewer hose for when you're seeing the water's coming out clear, you know that it kind of helps uh, cleanse the tank. Uh, one thing I usually like to also say is that you can close that off with it kind of fill up a little bit and then open it to kind of just help rinse off some of those tanks a little, uh, sensors a little bit as well. And then your other one here is gray. 
So once you have done, once you are done with the black, you would close black off, and then you would pull open your gray. Which I'm going to go ahead and close that guy, and we're going to go ahead and put this guy on. All right, so our tires here, as you see, we do have a notice for checked lug nuts. This sticker is what I like to call our over aggressive sticker because it wants you to check them at 10, 25, and 50 miles. Uh, I usually like to recommend 50, 100, 200 miles uh, when you're first getting out and getting going. Um, but I also like to tell the customer, usually when you're done camping, you're leaving the campground, you're usually making quite a few turns getting out of a campground. All right, but the most time, first place we're going when we leave is the gas station to refuel to head home. So while you're refueling, you can actually check the lug nuts. You're knocking out two birds with one stone. All right, the other thing is you always want to keep these tires maxed off at the top PSI level, which on these was 65. Oh, I do have the lug nuts torqued to 110 foot-pounds. Forgot to mention that. My apologies. This guy here is going to be in the back of your refrigerator. There is really nothing you really got to do in here except for maybe check for mud dauber nests, things along that nature. Other than that, a lot of the stuff in here is going to be service only. Uh, this guy here is going to be pretty much the back of our furnace. We do recommend you don't try to block this with anything. It, it does get hot, but we like to say put mud dauber screens on this. So it keeps the mud daubers and the wasp out of there. They can cause issues in building things inside that guy. Next, you have your satellite and cable hookup. A little tester tool I forgot to take off there my apologies uh, next we're gonna have our 30 amp power cord there is the warning sticker here most people try to install an outlet at their home what they end up trying to hook it up is like a dryer plug it's way too much power you'll fry all kinds of stuff in your camper so there's a nice little warning on that <clears throat> your bumper woods will hold your sewer hose it does, it's not supplied with the unit have the option for an observational backup camera as well we do have our spare tire and then we got our ladder to the roof basically this is to go up and just kind of inspect the roof we're not trying to have any kind of nascar parties or anything along those lines up there but you're just going up there to make sure that the ceiling hasn't kind of got soft created air bubbles and pop uh, or over time it's dried out and started cracking when that happens you're just going to clean the lab ceiling and go over it it is recommended you only want to try to do that two or three times and they do usually recommend completely stripping it and putting fresh sealant down after usually a third time of over overlap sealing. They do provide you with a dog leash holder here. We got our connection for the outside TV where you can get the to the outside. And then this guy here is going to be your fresh water tank. Pretty much it is gravity fed. On the other side is where his drain port is. It is basically located right there on the other side. I don't understand why they put it over there instead of over here. With the other That's right here is uh, underneath our steps is where our low point drains are going to be located. So you got a blue and a red. The blue is for cold, the red is for hot. Basically, what these what I like to say is when you're done camping, once again, we're trying to get all the water out. We'd open those guys up, open up a faucet, usually the bathroom one. As you drive home, air is going to blow through there and naturally push any of the excess water out for you. Uh, so that way you don't have any uh, water left in the lines where it could potentially come stagnant or bad. Uh, if that situation ever did occur, what you can do is you can put a, I believe it is a quarter cup of bleach into the fresh water tank, fill it up and then run it through your lines and let it sit for a couple hours. And then you're just drain it out and you're going to flush it. Here on the other side, we're going to have our tray here. This guy here just comes right here where these notches are on our edge. And he sits and locks in. This can be done on either side. And then while we're also in here, we have our mounts for our kayaks for the roof. Right here are pretty much our solar panel controller. Uh, basically, it monitors the battery, knows when to start charging the battery for us. 
Uh, this is does have a Bluetooth connection, so you can actually download an app on your phone and uh, download it. You can get into some of the settings and change things. This here is for an aftermarket tire monitoring system. Um, that's aftermarket. And then this guy here is just so you have a light in here so you can see if you need to. Nice thing about the camper, it is a key to light camper, so one key operates all the locks on the unit. Oh. Steps here, just fold. Back in. All right, so right over here on our side is where our controllers, our control panel is going to be. Basically, you have your sensors here that'll tell you your tank statuses and the battery. You know, it's going to read full. We're plugged in. It's charging, doing what it's supposed to do. And you got the fresh tank that's going to be empty. Our black tank's empty, and our gray is empty. You do not have an auxiliary tank. Next, you have your water pump. You're only using a water pump if you're using a fresh water tank. If you're hooked to city water, you do not need that guy. This is gonna be the option for the water heater for gas. The electric is gonna be located right here behind the fire extinguisher. And that's for the electric side. Always make sure there's water in the water heater before you turn these on. Next, we're gonna have our cabin lights. Pretty much this guy here is for above the uh, bed area. And then the other one here is for the rest of the living area. Then we had our cap lights on, our awning lights. And then our other auxiliary light light here is gonna be for the step light down below. And then our last auxiliary right here is actually for your tank heaters. So once the temperatures get below a certain reading, those will kick on to heat the tanks up so they wouldn't potentially freeze. Um, that, I'd like to say that's within reason. If, you're, if temperatures are usually within the low 20s and even the teens, uh, I'm going to be honest with you, those guys might try to struggle to keep things from freezing. Okay, so just please be mindful of that. All right. Our other switch here was going to be for our awning. It is quite breezy today. I don't want to try to open it up. It could be, uh, can cause potential damage. Strong winds can cause damage um, to the awning and or the unit if you are not careful. Uh, and then this guy here is our battery disconnect. So when you're storing the camper, you just push this guy in and it disconnects the battery from the camper so nothing would, if something was left on, it wouldn't potentially drain the uh, battery. Then down below is gonna be our carbon monoxide and LP detector. Uh, it is recommended, that's what this warning sticker here is. You do wanna test this guy usually every nine to 14 days. And to do the test, you're just simply gonna push this button right here. It's gonna perform its test. It'll do another beep. And then it should do another style beep for the other side. So if that guy does go off, you just do want to take the emergency precautions, try to get everyone out of the coach, turn off the pro uh, propane at the source, try to open a couple of windows, don't turn on any vents, okay, we're not trying to create a spark, okay, just please be mindful of propane. Alright, so basically we have the bed here, uh, underneath the bed in this corner is going to be where your um, water heater is located, for the back side where, your, uh, where it's winterized. set this guy up here so we can kind of be able to see but basically back here you're going to have the two lines right there uh you got the hot and the cold they even got it labeled on there but as you see they're wrapped around for the line right there uh whenever you go to unwinterize the coach run uh you're just going to basically turn those lines uh inward towards the water heater All right, next we're gonna just talk about our TV here. There's a strap here to pull it out. So whenever it's in the, cause it locks into place, but it does provide two different, two different options for power. So the red one here is actually gonna be for the 12 volt power. So if you didn't have, uh, if you wasn't able to uh, plug in the sure power, it will operate off the 12 volt battery. The other one right here is gonna be for the 110. 
and it's plugged in up there. Right behind here is where our TV antenna booster is located. Basically, there's a little red light here. It will light up when it's on. And then when you push this button, it would turn it off. Then we got our remote here. Go ahead and turn this guy on. Uh, we did pick up, I believe, it picked up 43 channels uh, in the St. Louis area. Uh, different areas will pick up different channels, so and so. Uh, so you would have to pretty much scan four channels to do so. You're just going to push our menu button right there. And we're just going to push, I know, just push the backspace button one time. It takes me to channel. From there, you go down. So if you're hooked to a campground cable, you would change this to cable. You'll turn that booster off. You have to turn that booster off for the cable signal to come through. Okay, that is really important. Okay, then change it to cable and then auto scan. It'll pick up those uh, campground channels, whatever is available. But if you're looking for the air, just leave it on air and go down to auto scan. I will readjust that for us. Oh. So right over here on the side is going to be where our control panel for the inverter is, to where you can turn it on or off. You got a 12 volt uh, or USB hook up there for charging your phone, and then that 110 line uh, plug outlet there. That's the one that would also can run off the inverter if you're using it. When you're plugged into sure power, all the outlets have power. You got your drawer space underneath as well. Next here in the bathroom, we're going to have our toilet. Uh, basically with the toilet, whenever you go to do your business, you would lightly press on this pedestal to add water. And then all the way down is going to flush. It will naturally put the water back in for you. Uh, you always do want to leave some kind of liquid on there so that seal doesn't get dry rotted or brittle because then the smell can start to go through it won't still hurt it won't start uh or stop holding the water things along that nature uh, another thing i like to say is if you get some non-stick cook spray you spray that bowl of the toilet it helps everything slide down and makes it easier clean for the cleaner uh, as you see i do have this panel taken off here i'm going to talk about that here in just a second right here is going to be our gfci outlet uh basically if um an outlet ain't working and it's got the GFCI sticker on it, come make sure this guy hasn't been tripped. Your light switch for in here is gonna be on the side here. Uh, we've got the bathroom uh, sink there. Basically down below here, in this area is basically where your water pump is located, but also where you would go to winterize your unit in the winter time. Basically you got this hose right here, and then there is a valve again that you would churn. I'll try to turn that so you can see that. That valve right there, right there that you would churn. Right now it is actually set for this. So I will actually change it back over for the uh, for the fresh water tank, just in case you guys decide to use that. But basically when uh, we blew out the lines, I at least take some antifreeze, run it through that water pump. So, cause there's usually some water left over residual. If you leave the low point drains open, Put that antifreeze to it. Just help cycle that out. Yeah. And then we got our shower here, basic hot and cold. Uh, they do have a little guy here. What this does is it actually stops the flow of water because your water heater is only six gallons. Uh, so you got to try to minimize that hot water usage. All right, while we're still right here, We'll go ahead and discuss, talk about our radio. We heard the speakers outside. Uh, basically, that was speaker zone one. I'm going to turn that down just a little bit. Speaker zone two is our inside speakers. You can't have them both on at the same time. You can have just the outside on, or you can have just the uh, inside on if you wanted to. USB hookup, HDMI hookup. Uh, this guy is connected to the TV, I believe for surround sound uh, through the auxiliary setting. 
Uh, if you just push this button, it'll just mute it. You do have to push and hold to shut it off. But it does also have a Bluetooth setting as well. And it does provide this little itty bitty remote for him. Then we got our kitchen sink there. Uh, it is actually a really pretty deep sink. And then we got our stove area. Basically with this, you do need to have a barbecue lighter to light it, but you'll just push this down, turn it to the light setting, and then use your barbecue lighter to light. We do have our hood range here. Basically we got our light and our fan. Sounds like a jet engine trying to take off. Uh, you got the storage up above. This light here you would turn on by hand. You got storage down below as well. Uh, then pretty much you got your cabinet area here, a little closet area, and then your three drawers. Uh, pretty much this guy here area, you can actually break this down into a bed as well. Uh, basically you pull the, pull the table up, you would pull those legs out, and then the table here actually sits on these lips on each side. And then fills in with the cushions. Basically, you just take these guys like this. And basically, it'll sit on there just like so. Let's see. This guy over here is going to be our fire exit window. So if we had to try to get out of the coach for some reason, you're able to get out. Uh, this guy here just basically opens. It's on a hinge, so the whole thing would fling open so you can get out. This guy here, so you could try to pull the screen out. I always recommend, if there's a fire, just get out. Don't be trying to go through the measure. I'd rather just replace a screen than hear that somebody got injured or burnt or something along those lines. Uh, next, I'm gonna have my camera lady here slide over this way so I can kind of show you the thermostat here. So basically with this guy, you would press and hold to turn it on. Right now I do have it set on furnace. And as you see, there's fan speeds there. All right, so with the fan speeds, so zero is gonna be, it's gonna be the furnace, okay? If you decide, or for some reason that you hit, oh, wrong one, let me go back to that furnace. I'm actually going to get this to turn on for us because I'm gonna try to demonstrate what I'm talking about so you guys have a little better knowledge. So our furnace just kicked on. So now, right now that fan speed is in zero, meaning that like the fan on the air conditioner is not going to come on, okay? If you happen to push this fan button and it got low, high, and auto, what these settings are doing, yes, your fan, the fan on the air conditioner is coming on. What that is doing, though, is it is pushing the air down because heat rises. So it's actually pushing the heat downward to try to help conserve uh, your amount of propane that's being used because the heat would be escaping through the ceiling over time. So it's actually a really nice feature with the Spirion air conditioners. Next, that's the fan. So you just have low or high. That's the only two settings they offer. And then there's this dry setting. So what this dry setting is, is that it is meant to take the humidity out of the camper so the compressor doesn't overwork itself and potentially freeze. So what it's doing is it will kick on for 10 minutes and then it rests for six minutes. But like I said, what it's doing is it's taking the humidity out of the air so the compressor isn't potentially freezing because the air conditioner is overworking trying to keep it cold in here. Then you have the air conditioner itself, where you have low, high, and then auto. Of course, the auto will kick on and off on its own. And then you press and hold the power slash mode button to turn it off. All right. So then next we're gonna have the microwave, fairly self-explanatory. Uh, one thing I usually like to recommend is you set the timer. Uh, you guys go out and do anything like you're going to your friend's camp lot, you're going floating, uh, just hang, you know, just out doing something. You come back, you see that it's basically it's not showing your time anymore. Well, that tells you there was a power failure. You need to find out if that was from the electric company or potentially the campground. Okay, and just see what's going on there. Okay, 
Uh, next, we're going to have our refrigerator with this guy. It's really nice and simple. You have your on and off. And then you have this guy here. Basically, it's set in auto. So in auto, it's always looking for 110. Okay, if we were to unplug, as long as the propane is turned on, this will automatically switch over to propane. Uh, it will try to fire three times. If it does not, after a third time, if it does not fire, that's when the check light would come on on, on the uh, LP side. And then inside, basically on the inside here, this guy here is where you can actually adjust the temperature of it just by sliding this up or down. Uh, up makes it cooler. And then you got the freezer side up in here, which it's got a instruction manual there. We'll go ahead and pull him up. We're going to go ahead and set him right inside here. Inside here is going to be most of the manuals for the uh, most of the appliances in the coach. Uh, a lot of them are starting to go more paperless now. So uh, if there's not a manual for something in there. Uh, you'll just have to try to look up uh, what the item is and the model number of it online. Um, oh, down below there is going to be where our fuse panel box is located. In here, basically everything that runs off the 110 is going to be on your breakers. So you have to be plugged into Sure Power to use it. And then the other one here with all the uh, fuses is going to be for the battery, everything that would run off the battery. And they got it all labeled right here for you as well. Nice thing is it looks like a lot of the things are a 15 amp fuse. That's a plus. So instead of having to buy a variety pack, you can buy just a single 15s or a packet of just 15s. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. All right. And I think basically from there we have went around your coach. Um, I hope this is knowledgeable and informational enough for you guys. If you guys do have any questions, you please feel free to call us. We'll do our best to answer them for you over the phone. Uh, oh, I did just notice this here. So you would download this for the manual for the camper itself. You just scan that and it'll take you for a, P and then you'll download like a PDF file and it'll be basically the manual for the hitch. All right, other than that, you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you.